in peace. Isham. How you doing, Isham? Hey, what up, though, Scott? What up, Mac J? What's going on with it, Sean? Just chilling, man. I was listening to that shit. Thanks for having me back, boys. Happy New Year and all that good shit. Glad we're still here, 2016. You know what I'm saying? Um, A lot of people are real happy right now. I've I've looked on uh, uh, Facebook, uh, a lot of the suicidalists, man, uh, they're all excited that you did this, man. What what made you want to put all these EPs on one release? Well, um, the reason then for that was because when we put that record out um, back in, you know, the end of 91, something like that, <clears throat> um, it was just like recorded in those times, you know, and it was b- before Pro Tools. You know, we, we I think I recorded that record on the 8-track. You know what I'm saying? And wow. um, it was actually really hard to do that shit. You know what I'm saying? It's real easy to do shit nowadays. You know, you can just copy and paste some shit. But back in the day, you know, you didn't really have as much um, technology to work with. And um, it was just some amazing records that we put together. And I felt like people needed to hear them, you know, because you couldn't really hear what was actually going on in some of those pieces. So, you know, we remastered it with, the, you know, with the today's technology, and, you know, we brought it up to speed. So that's that's the record, right? Yeah, that's cool. Now, did you have all the original, like, like, did you have them on ADATS or whatever? Did you have all the original recordings still? No. That record was recorded on the Tascam 688 8-track. Wow. 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 The homie don't play was. The homie don't play was recorded on a, a eight track, and erotic poetry was re- recorded on the eight track. That's why I sound like that. You know, we didn't have no money. You know what I'm saying? We was fucking poor. So, but at the same time, you know, we we I had access to some equipment, and this was the equipment that I was using. You know, so, you know, um, the fucking, you know, that's just why it sounds like that. You know what I'm saying? But. It was still Class. able to able to able to work. You know, we made it work. You know, some kind of way, and we took that what we had, and then we took it to a studio, and then they transferred it over to Real to Reels, the R E E L Reels. So that's where you know we get the whole real life production shit from. But you know, we had transferred it back then, and back then, you know, I would go to the studio and the engineer in there, you know, he would be tripping and shit, talking about man, your shit's hot and you got to turn it down or whatever the fuck he was going through that day. You know what I'm saying? And he was felt like what I was doing was breaking the rules. You know what I'm saying? With the frequencies and just doing it just how the fuck I heard it. You know what I'm saying? Opposed to how it was, you know, maybe textbook taught. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just was, you know, just making it, making it work. You know what I'm saying? So we just was making it work. So, um, you know, we, we took it to the studio and even back then with the technology that they had, it still doesn't compare to like today's technology and what's capable, you know, what what's what's capable of being done, you know, through today's technology and mastering things. So I just felt like you know people needed to hear what we was doing, and you know I thought it was some cool stuff to be actually putting out there without you know modern technology and just the help of all the you know extra bells and whistles that we got today, you know, just to show people that, you know, shit, some of that shit was on a turntable. We was making scratches and samples work and just, you know, we was playing instruments into the samples, like, in real time. It wasn't no loop of shit up, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I, that. so I just think, you know, people should, you know, check it out, you know, and that was Homie Don't Play Erotic Poetry, um, Maggot Brain Theory, you know, and then um, the Helter Skelter, too, is a part of this whole package deal. Um, when we did Helter Skelter and Maggot Brain Theory, you know, we might have started seeing a little paper. You know what I'm saying? Well, not a lot, but a little bit. So those recordings actually started to sound better. You know what I mean? So we was actually, you know, uh, transferring from getting out of the uh, – off of the eight track recording going into an actual studio, so you know that's a mi- mixture of that going on. That's why it sounds like that. But at the same time, you know, once it was remastered, I still wanted the people to hear, you know, what was going on because you know we had some going on in there. Yeah, the original feel to it. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, when sure. those when those originally came out, I mean they they were they were selling like crazy. I mean they were here uh, in Illinois. They were all throughout the South, and I, I know they were uh, they were everywhere. Now, um, homie, don't play the cover itself. It influenced a lot of shit. Now, there's one question I want to ask you because right around the same time, 
you know, Damon Wayans and Living Color, you had Homie the Clown, and we'll talk about the other influences too. But um, did did you come out with that before Homie the Clown came out? Actually, you know, to be totally honest with you, it was a tribute to like what Damon Wayans was doing as the character what Homie, because that was it was huge. That shit was huge back then, you know. But you know, it was a skit that Damon was doing, you know, and it, as a comedy thing, and, and and we just wanted to do that on a record. And actually, because it was just funny to us, and that was our shit back in the day in Living Color. You know what I'm saying? So we, oh, yeah, you know, I still watch that shit. Yeah, it's funny as fuck, you know what I'm saying? So basically, you know, took that character, you know what I'm saying, and put it on a record, you know what I'm saying? And that was the first time that was done, and we just called it Homie the Clown. That's where really all of that shit come from. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I was amazed because I saw you, um, I mean, to me, you you look like fucking, uh, what, what's the dude's name? Cesar Romero from the, who played the Joker on that <laughs> And yeah. that's what first came to, the, to my mind. I mean, you got to realize we didn't have any makeup artists. We didn't have any money. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't know what the fuck we was doing. You know what I'm saying? And, and at that time, dead presidents wasn't even out. So, you know, we yeah, just yeah, stumbled up. Dead on, yeah. Right. We just stumbled up on doing that shit. Like, not stumbled up on it, but just wanted to come out in the way nobody else ever came out. And to be... I already was Esham. I had a record out as Esham. You know what I'm saying? To just yeah. bring forth another character, you know, that was still me, but it didn't look like me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, so <laughs> that's how we came in with that, and that's how we developed, you know, just the theatrics of putting it into the art and all that, and just, you know, it, it spawned all this, you know, subculture and subgenre, and, and you know, the rest is history. You know what I mean? Oh, definitely, definitely. At this time, another uh, Detroit group, which you're you're going to be doing a show with soon, we're going to be talking about ICP. At the time, they were known as Inner City Posse. Um, yeah. Do you think that this cover changed them to Insane Clown Posse? I mean, I don't right know. That's, that's something that you would probably really have to ask them, you know? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they would have to tell you how that switched over and what was their thoughts on it. You know what I mean? You know, I I don't know. I would think it influenced them heavily, but I don't know what made them switch over. You know what I'm saying? But you know, to be honest, yeah, they always credit you as as, a, as an influence. Uh, I've seen in in, in uh, various interviews over the years. You know, and I always thought, you know, I mean, because no one did that shit other than Kiss. You know, what I'm saying you were like the first rapper that I ever seen paint his face. You know, not. I mean, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's there's really a few other rappers good, though. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's really all good. It wasn't something that, you know, it wasn't something that we was doing like that. It was it was just something that we did, and we had no idea it was, it, it was we were sparking out. a fire. You know what I'm saying? That would turn into all this other stuff. And everybody contributed, too, on their own. You know what I'm saying, though? Like, they, they all contributed. It's like, you know, I love it. You know what I'm saying, though? Think about what I'm saying. I, I love it. You know, like... Like, I used to feel a certain kind of way about that shit, like, back in the day. You know what I mean? Because I was younger. But as I see, like, what happened, you know what I mean, and how it is, like, I'm like, damn, I love it. Like, I love being the first, like, to hit the pussy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like, damn, I hit that shit first. Yeah. Busted it. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. But it's all good, man. Everything is good, man. I'm just like, hell yeah. But, yeah, I believe that. You know, they probably got some, you know, influence heavily off of that, but you would have to really ask them that question, what changed, you know, why they, you know what I'm saying, though? Like, why they yeah. changed their name or whatever. I don't, I, I wouldn't, couldn't tell you. You know, we was getting so much money doing what we was doing, I ain't have time to be thinking about shit, but boom, and homie, the homie, no clowns and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, all types of right. things going on. You know what I'm saying? And it still is, though. That's why I'm like, oh, it's crazy, man. You still so, do. I mean, yeah, know. all these years later, you're still dropping product. Um, now, on the same day, you dropped erotic poetry, but the original cover, now, I never had the original cover, because, you know, you got to bear with me. I came in about a year later after the day oneers, but... Uh, the original cover said part two on there. Was that just a fuck up or, or what was the deal with that? I mean, those were some creative uh, marketing tactics from my brother. You know, back then there was no internet. You know, that, how could you that say boy. to be continued? You know, yeah, shout out to that boy. How could you say to be, to be continued back then? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it was, it was every, it was, um, it was just creative marketing. 
You know what I'm saying? And there was no, never a part two. It was just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it was, was just something to keep, yeah, to keep people talking in case they was liking this style of rhyme. So Homie the Clown was one style of rhymes, and then you had the erotic poetry was another style of rhymes, like sex rhymes and, you know, pimping and whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? All those kind of rhymes. That's what I was called erotic poetry. So we was just dropping different kinds of styles. You know what I'm saying? And that's really what what it was all about. Like we was just dropping different kind of styles, not knowing that we was really opening a university for people to come learn. You know what I'm saying? But that's what we yeah, were doing. Yeah, as a school, you know, the school of each time. I mean, you, I mean, the influence is there for sure. Definitely. I mean, so it's all um, good though. You know, traces of your hey. blood type, so to speak. Uh, they're they're mm-hmm. floating around here and there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's but, traces uh, of the blood type. Let's give them, uh, okay, we, we, we heard uh, Homie Don't Play. Let's give them erotic poetry. Then we're going to come back. We're going to take some calls. And then we're going to give them uh, some from Helter Skelter and some from Maggot Brain Theory. So don't go nowhere. Hit the line, 714-409-0548. Talk to her. You know what I'm saying? That was our <laughs> our shit right there for the for, for the middle. And, and really, you know, we had a show last night, Ishan, where we had a bunch of pioneers on the show. And uh, uh-huh. for us in the middle, you're one of them pioneers. I really no, I I appreciate that for you from the middle. Those lyrics. <laughs> shit looks funny as hell. Uh, <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I, yeah, I never you, could take myself seriously. Do you ever sit back and uh, remember the times you was like when you listen to them old songs? Do you ever sit back and remember your mind frame when you was writing that shit, like being older? That's now? what I'm saying. Yeah, man, I was a fucking teenager. You know what I'm saying? That shit just funny, though, like to hear what I was thinking about, the shit that we were just going through. You know what I mean? It's it's funny, but it's just like, damn. But I think about it in retrospect, like fucking um, erotic poetry. What's that? Fucking 92, right? Oh, 91, 92, right? 91. Erotic poetry, 91, right? Okay. That's the when chronic, I, that's the, when I the chronic came out. Remember? Where did the chronic come out? That came out uh, in 90, and you came out uh, with True in, what, 89? I'm just saying, like, you know, I I listen to some of the samples that I used to do and stuff and just listen to stuff that actually super blew up and be like, damn, I wonder if they heard some of this shit and liked it too, though. Not saying that it was, you know, some, some, some shit in the water, but, like, damn, maybe they was liking it. And you know what I mean? Like, that was they not to me. They they can't deny that that's for sure. Let's take some callers. Uh, your neck of the woods. Yeah, good songs. Good Price. times. <laughs> Sub three one three. You on the, you on the air with Esha? Yo, what up, Yeah, yeah, yeah you got right now. Oh, How you doing? Yo, what up? What up? What up? What up? What up? What up, man? What up, though? Shit, man. Uh, man, I don't even know where to start. I mean. I've been down with you for a long time. I won't say day one, but you know, ever since my brother put me on, man, it's just, it's just man, all love for you, man. I think you're the greatest of all time. I just think the whole world should know, you know, what I mean, how great you really are, man. A lot of the stuff you've introduced and did for us, man, I just thank you a thousand times over, man. Real talk. <clears throat> no, I appreciate it, man. Much love. It's all good. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. Blast me is my favorite artist, and I have to say. uh, my favorite E is booming words from hell. Now I got a couple questions though for you real quick. Look for it. All right. Uh do you think it's possible we can get another shot at the R L P coat? What you mean, like throwing it somewhere or what? I mean it was only one of a kind, you know, for the for the ones you came out with. At the time I really didn't have what was needed to get one, but I still want one. I've been wanting one the whole time I've been collecting music. Oh shit, we got those. You can just go to Afterlife dot com. They got that shit for you over there. Look. Oh God, I'm gonna you grab me a blue and white. That's what's up. What's up, man? I appreciate the call, man. You stay up, bro. Thanks, thanks That's for calling, up. man. No doubt. Yeah, man. thanks for tuning in, my guy. Well, uh, yeah, appreciate it. We got a uh, got another caller two three one. What's up, two three one? You're on the uh, air with uh, Esham, Murder Mass Music Show. Hello. Yeah, two, three, one, you live. Oh, what up, what up, what up, what up? No, this this Mook. I just called, you know, I was I was on Facebook and shit and I was I you know, the um 
I just called in to say what's up. You know, this was a uh, one in a lifetime opportunity right here. You know. What up, though? What's up? Hell, man, Appreciate just shit, man. You like you, you know what? I, you know, you like an urban legend, man, and it's like, you know, what I'm saying from for all these years, you know, a lot of rappers fall off. You know what I'm saying? But you, you still in there, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in this bitch till I'm out of this bitch. You feel me? <laughs> it's all real, man. It's all real, man. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. We got. We'll take one more call. Hey, this is uh, this is buddy six. What's up, six? Yeah, hey, what's up? What's happening, y'all? We're tuning in, man. What's, what's up, up, man? man? I, I gotta Stop say, on, man. Um, I pretty much don't listen to rap no more. I think this shit's corny as fuck. It, it makes me sick. But some of the only rap I do listen to, like Spice, and is Eshan, man. That's some of the shit I always listen because that's, that's like my childhood right there, man. And, and, and you know, uh, Prez, you and Mac both know when I host my show on Saturday, I pretty much just play like Nat King Cole and shit like that. The only rap you'll hear is like from, from Eshan or Nottis. That's always yeah, been my just, shit. Uh, KFYB, every Saturday, uh, you know, 7 p.m. on the West Coast, 9 p.m. Central. Um, most definitely. Call, call back in, Max. Call drop. You got to call into that show, too, uh, Esham. It's, it's actually a comedy show. We actually have uh, ex-adult star Velvet Rose co-hosting it with Devil Six and Mac J. And uh, it's like a fan of comedy with a porn star in the mix. Call yeah. into that show every Saturday. Every Saturday. That's all we do, man. We talk shit and just, just pretty much just, say, uh, just make fun of people all day long. That's, that's all we do for three hours, <laughs> just talk shit. So you call me in one day. You won't, you know I'm down, dog. You know I appreciate it. I'm down. Yeah, you gotta sit in with sure, us. Sure, we gotta get you. Yeah. What's up? Hell yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. Um, you know, but okay, you you dropped erotic poetry and uh, homie don't play in the same day. You know, a year later you dropped uh, Judgment Day one and two on the same day. A lot of people don't don't give you credit for that too. You're the first guy to do that. But then you come back with your third EP, Helter Skelter. Um, probably play uh, the title track of that later on, but I want to play a song called Devil's Night, man. This song is a motherfucker. Tell everybody about the uh, inspiration behind this and the EP, the whole EP is itself. But Well, uh, Helter Skelter, that was around the time when uh, Malice Green, back in Detroit, the police probably like they beat Malice Green to death. And um, it was a lot of unsettled and unrest in the streets. You know what I'm saying? So we made a song about, you know, police brutality and shit like that, and that's what Helter Skelter was all about. And the type, the song you want to play, The Devil's Night, was, um, you know, just like a, a anthem for previous Devil's Nights because the city of Detroit would, like, burn every Devil's Night. It'd be on fire, like, you know, like the California fires, but it'd be just the city of Detroit, you know what I'm saying? And, that, and it was just, you know, like a song, like, dedicated to that shit. Not that I was out starting fires or wanting people to start a fire, but I was a little kid living in that motherfucker while the fires were burning, and I saw that shit. So, you know, we was rapping about it. Yeah, yeah, that shit, that, uh, real, real fucking brutal track. Um, and you know, all this stuff uh, is relevant today too, because you talked about police brutality. I think it's, it's really at a all, either it's at an all time high or or it's. At, People got cell phones. I don't know what's going on, but people are getting murdered left and right. They have torture chambers in Chicago. It might be the same, you know, because, you know, you just didn't see it then. You know what I'm saying? Like, now you see it, and people shot They have cameras everywhere. And shit's been going on, you know what I'm saying? So you just see it now, you know what I'm saying? But that shit's been going on, like, you know, since the beginning. So, you know, I don't, you know, now people just see it now. You know, they need to come out, but it's all good, though. But yeah, that's what all yeah. that stuff is about, you know, just protesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, except you know, rocks off. That's kind of going to uh, back to the erotic poetry well, a little. You bit. know, but, you know, <laughs> I was, I was, I was trying to find off myself. Every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I was trying to find myself as an artist too. You know what I'm saying? Like these are the early days. You know what I'm saying? Like if you notice, like even now, like I don't go all off into it like that. But I was trying to find myself, trying to find my lane too, though. You know, I could do all these styles, you know, I was just trying to find my lane. So, you know, that's what you hear in, like, me progressing as an artist and trying different shit, you know, so. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. And so so you dropped this pretty much uh, not too long after Life After Death then. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, it was just coming consecutively. You know, we didn't have no, it was really no rules for us as a company. Once I found out, I was, you know, it was just go time. We was powering up every time we got a chance. I'm Pac-Man. I'm powering up every time. Power up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a- Power pill, yeah, every time. But it was no rules for us, so we could do what we wanted to do. You know, we didn't have no contracts. You know what I'm saying? We didn't, we was making the music. We was paying for it. We putting it out. You know, we could basically do what we want before it was cool to do what you want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Well, let's give them, let's give them devils night, and then we'll be back. Uh, we'll take a couple more calls, and then we'll chop it up about maggot brain theory. Uh, also, stick around after the show. I did a pre-recorded interview with uh, BKB of Deified Records. Uh, got some tracks that he's going to uh, play on there too. So uh, stick around for them, and also go to ugsforlife.com. Check out our fucking archive, and please check out that show from last night too. We had hella pioneers on mm-hmm. the show. Be right back. Oh, yeah. Devil. No. Strike them, struck them, burn them up, fuck them. Everybody goes through that phase in life, you know, where they're, they're kind of wondering about religion a little bit. And I used to be mm-hmm. afraid that if I listened to Esham's tapes, I was going to go to hell. No, I'm <laughs> We're back here with Esham. Uh, we just right. heard Devil's Night off the classic EP, Helter Skelter, which is now digitally remastered along with the Rodic Poetry, Homie No Play, and Maggot Brain Theory, all on one. CD acidrap.com. How much is it, E? Like eleven ninety nine, twelve ninety nine, something like that. It's cheap. It's nothing. It's pocket change. It's it's popcorn money. Listen, and if you don't listen to Esham, you're going to hell. You're, you're gonna, gonna go to hell. For <laughs> eternity. You're gonna go to hell if you don't listen. But anyway, yeah, yeah. man, that shit uh, remastered, and um, we got a, a couple other things coming coming pretty soon too, though. I mean, um, I, I don't. I don't know how to say it. Uh, it was telling me my advisors, hold on. my advisors, my advisors. You got well. well you just released Dichotomy, um, which to me was one of the best albums of 2015, hands down. It and Carino's Making Enemies, um, which is available also at rap dot com. Are you going to drop another solo here? You talking about some new no, stuff? Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, right now. I just been like crazy working in the office, you know what I'm saying, and just yeah. working the records that I got, and just really concentrating on that. Like I, I want to get my visual stuff a little better than it's been going, you know what I mean. So right now I just been working in the office and working on that. I got a a few possible tours lined up and you know some overseas stuff, but just really heavily working in the office. That's really my days, you know what I mean. But I, yeah. I'm not playing. I've been working around in the studio. I've been Talking to a few different people about a few little ideas, but nothing solid so far, you know. So we so we could definitely expect some so some stuff in 2016 for sure. It looks like. I mean, no, no, I mean, I, I got that fucking closed casket remastered, you know. Ooh. On the low. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. I, on the low. I got yeah. that on the low. <laughs> I got that, that on the low. You can get that back on the but I've got yeah. that already right now. I'm looking at those right now. I'm looking at oh, a yeah. bunch of those. Hey, you, you gotta get that mail there, man. I still say "Light Years Away" with the Happy Days beat is just one of my all-time favorites. That's that's just yeah. the shit right there. Uh, you yeah. you know what? I was trying all type of stuff, man. I was just, you know I love what? That shit. Yeah. I was like, when I make a, make a joint or try to make some music or, or start to make music, I was trying to do something that I never heard before. You know, yeah, I can go in there and. You know, make a song that I heard before. You know what I'm saying? Or I heard somebody else do, or you know, try to emulate what they're doing. You know, but I was always trying to make something that you've never heard before, but you heard it, or just you know, had some hip hop shit. But it's yeah. just memorable. Yeah. Some, some, some creative shit. shit. You still, you still never heard anybody just murder the Happy Days fucking intro like that. Just <laughs> fantastic. No, only, only you can do it, man. That's yeah. just real talk because. You know, like Six said, I mean, that's, that's innovative. And you did that with a lot of different, I mean, you went a lot, I mean, that same album, you know, uh, you got Out Your Atmosphere, you got, uh, what's that one where you're talking about fucking bitches with your nine-inch nail like an animal? What the fuck is that one called? Uh, oh, fuck, I, re- uh, I, re- I reviewed the CD and I can't remember it. You made it and you can't remember uh, it. Let's go here. Six, help us. Uh, God, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, there you go, there you go. Aha, uh-huh, yeah. 
you know oh, what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, the very last phrase of this shit. Yeah. Went, went in so many different directions. Um, and, and, and that's what I think sets you apart from just about everybody else. It's pretty much everybody else stays in that one box. You know, they kind of stick to what they do, but you're willing to experiment and go in other areas. Um, and you've been doing that your whole career. What made you uh, uh, want to do that when everybody else pretty much just sticks to that one little thing? You just want to separate yourself from everybody here. I mean, it was the best way we could sell records. You know, if, if everybody yeah. on the block selling, selling um, you know, peanut butter cookies, you know, we're going to come over there with chocolate chips. You feel what I'm saying? It was just... <laughs> You know, the best way to sell records, and not to, and and not just have the chocolate chips. We got the, you know, the macadamians. We got everything. You know what I mean? Oreos. We, you know, they just got one flavor. We got like everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. 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 Because when when you bought a ghetto boy, I mean, shout out. I mean, these are my favorite groups and and, and artists. You know, with Ghetto Boys or Spice One or Too Short, you knew every time what you were getting. I knew every time what I was getting when I was getting the Esham record, but I also didn't know what else I was going to get. So that that's what always made it exciting, and that's what the uh, the people need to go back and check out. Uh, you know, get all these remastered versions that you, that you're dropping, and also make sure to get Dichotomy. That again, that's a hell of a fucking album. Do you still mm-hmm. believe is one of my favorite songs off that album? Are you going to do any videos? Um, to any of those tracks? I'm I'm talking to, you know, a couple of like um real professional video guys, you know what I mean? And I'm I'm trying to work a few things out. But right now, like I say, I'm just heavy in the office, man. The, this office work got me super busy, like crazy busy. You know what I mean? Like I can't even like damn near do everything, but I'm doing it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you're definitely making it happen. And uh, I'm glad, you know, here it is, uh 2016. And you're breathing new life into these records that were classics a quarter of a century ago. Um, well, no, they deserve so I, these these timeless classics. They deserve a remastered look, you know, and they deserve a yeah. second listen because um, people really need to go back and check their history and and figure out where a lot of stuff, a lot of this stuff is coming from, and, and really hear the authenticity and and what's going on, you know. And like I say, it was really hard to do what is going on on a lot of those records given the the limited tools that we had access to. Yeah. But it, it oh, came yeah, out definitely. amazing. You know, we made it we made it work. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Oh yeah, yeah. You guys another thing I noticed too, you know, uh of course uh, uh two live crew N W A they had the catalogs on the inside of the album cover, but you, you made that a point to make sure to offer, you know, your fans different merchandise and, and you're still doing it to this day. Uh, what are some of the uh, products you got available for sale now? As far as well, shirts, I mean, and stuff? everything we doing is real exclusive. You know, we don't keep a, keep a, something around too long. Like it's a limited edition, and once we run out, you know, we basically give giving something new because um, that's just how society is now. And we just keep everything yeah. real new, limited, and real exclusive. And um, we just hoping everybody can follow suit and. And and if they're following our motto, great. You know, we love it. You know, we and it's room for everybody. You know, <laughs> it's the Powerball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. If you hit that Powerball, you can get all those bomber jackets. Every single one ever yeah. made, going back to. No, yeah. <laughs> it's just the way you gotta feel. Even if you don't hit the Powerball, you know, you gotta feel like you know you're getting that Powerball. You know, when you're doing whatever you're doing out there. You know, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, real talk. We're going to go into uh, maggot brain theory here in a minute, but let's take a call. Um, 313. You're on the line with uh, uh, Esham here on the Murder Master Music Show. What up, though? This is King Tate. King Tate, how you doing, man? What's going down? Hey, man, I just want to know if you're going to remaster that uh, Life After Death. Shit, Life After Death? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I, I got I got some special stuff coming for that whole thing. You know what I mean? I'm just um, not doing that right this second. But yeah, there's gonna be a whole like not as box set and shit that we're gonna put together. So. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's good. I'm coming one. Oh, all to the good. Yeah. But it's gonna get remastered because it deserves to be remastered. Because you gotta remember, them records is coming from 1992. 
You know, they right, didn't right. even have Pro Tools. They didn't even have the Apple MacBook. They didn't have nothing. You had a Macintosh. Your man, uh, Steve Jobs, was a teenager. We <laughs> <laughs> didn't have none of this shit. Like, come on. We was playing on Atari. Right, right. Yeah, it's all right. And you know, yeah, again, ahead of time, you know, stuff is timeless music. Definitely, we got it's going to be some stuff coming. We got a, we got a lot of stuff coming. We just got to do it properly. So that's why it just take a minute mm-hmm. to get all this stuff done. Even the merchandise we put out, a lot of this stuff is handcrafted. You know, it's not just something that is getting mass produced. You know, these are you know high quality items. No, I noticed that, man. I noticed that. Even back in the day, you always took pride in, in uh, the stuff you put out. You had the wool caps. when they, You know, you ordered from these other places. They had these cheap little cotton fucking hats that weren't worth a fuck. You always had the wool <laughs> caps. And, you know, big-ass not, posters not, instead of these little we wanted placards. To we wanted to represent the brand properly. You know, and, and, and this is the way we knew how to do it. Like, you know, we didn't know that nobody else was doing it like this. You know what I mean? Like, you know, our promotional poster was a 36 by 40. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just some right. shit. You know, like, we didn't know that nobody else was doing it like that. And, and we were just doing it for the people. The people gave us so much, we were just giving it back, and we're still giving it back. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just do it for the people now. Like, we, we want people to enjoy the music because we enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? Though it makes us feel good. <laughs> Excuse me. When people listen to the music, we enjoy that, and we, we, we appreciate it. And we appreciate them appreciating the art and, and letting us entertain for them. And that's just really what it is. At the end of the day, people be like, yeah, you know, and I appreciate that shit. It's mad respect. And we just like, you know, thanks for letting us entertain you. You know what I mean? That's real talk, man. Um, you came out in 94 uh, right before Closed Casket, which – People are now going to be anticipating this uh, remastered version, but uh, you no, came out with the coming, and so that, that motherfucker might come hot tomorrow morning. I don't know, depending on how I feel after I drink this bottle <laughs> of red wine. <laughs> Shit. Shit. I don't yeah. know. You, 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 you'll, have fools, you'll have fools on the computer all night long, just glued to that shit. Taking man, fucking uh, man, 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 man. trying to keep awake. I love it, man. I love it. You know, I mean, it ain't no more record stores, but fuck it. You know, we got it. I had to adapt. Got it. It's like everybody. You're the record store yeah. now. You know. Right. I mean, right. Pretty much. They at the source, man. You ain't got to cut through no middle, man. You just get it direct. It's crazy when you go into uh, uh, like a Best Buy or one of these places. And uh, I remember going in there and just seeing rows and rows of CDs. Now you got to like fucking. It, it's almost impossible to find the shits anymore. So, you know, everybody go to acidrap dot com, get this EP. Now, uh, uh, maggot brain theory, man. W- what's the deal with this EP? Because this this was a class. First of all, I love the cover. One of my favorite covers of all time. Tell everybody about this one. Um, those are big ass silkworms on there. Actually, they're not maggots, but they was big as hell. Cause we couldn't take a picture Bro, of a maggot because. It- uh, yeah, grubs, because the, the the cameras we had wasn't no digital shit. It wasn't focusing in on no little ass maggot. So we had to get the big ass grubs to do that. Um, maggot brain theory. That was uh, when Dennis Archer was in office. You know what I'm saying? Back in Detroit, it was a lot of shit going on. You know what I'm saying? It was um, just coming off that whole Malice Green thing. You know, and. Um, Think Walter Butts ever went and started sucking them nuts in prison or what? Yeah, it was it was all of that. You know, I was still <laughs> pissed off. You know what I mean? I was still pissed off about that shit. You know what I'm mean? saying? Just the whole ordeal. So that's what my rhymes and shit was about. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm sitting in Detroit, it's fucking hot. You know what I'm mean? saying? Like, and it was just that's what it was about. So it was just about trying to come out of that oppression. You know what I'm saying? From under that, you know that that sh- that you know being our city was under siege. You know. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's what that was about. But there's some highlights on there because I was about to drop closed casket. And that's really, you know, where you get the uh, digging on the DL and, you know, um, stuff like that. You know, I was just trying to, you know, just lighten it up a little bit because it was so tense back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Just, and that's why I will always throw a song in there like that, you know, because it would be so much 
you know, what's going on, you know, I'm holding a mirror up to reality, and I'm just talking about the shit that I see on the news outside, what's going on, what happened next door, you know what I'm saying, though? I'm putting all that shit in my rhymes, you know, I'm just holding the mirror up to society, and every every once in a while, you know, it's just like watching the news. When I hear it, it just all sound bad, you know what I'm saying? So now... I got to throw a song in there like Digging on the DL or Sunshine or something like that just to keep it on a positive note with myself to know that, it, you know, it's going to be all right, you know, even in the midst of the twist of the drama. Like, even though all this bad shit is going on, you know what I'm saying? Sunshine. Does that make sense? Or, yeah. Got to gotta, gotta balance it out. Definitely. Yeah, and, and the beat of this song is, is, is just crazy. When, when you guys hear this, you're going to know what uh, we're talking about. This is Maggot Brain Theory. You know, off the new uh, uh, EP collection remastered, available right now on acidrap.com. Go get it. We'll be right back and close out this uh, interview with uh, Esham. And stick around. We got a segment interview with BKB, DFI Records. Don't go. Man, nobody, nobody. That beat. Has a I was about like to say that. that beat sick as a motherfucker, no. too. <laughs> many, many, many might have tried over the years, but Esham, uh, uh, you still... Uh, you're still the man when it comes to this, man. Thank you for continuing to not only make new music, but also to uh, re-release these uh, timeless classics, man. And we look forward to all that you're going to be dropping in the future. Um, you talked about a box set. You talked about a closed casket. Um, so, man, much success to you. And you get ready to do some shows. Uh, uh, what's the first one you're doing? Are you doing one with ICP, I heard? Oh, yeah, um, Black History Month, um, February the 20th. 2016, we'll be at Harpo's with ICP, and we're going to be doing a show. We're going to, you know, this is the show telling everybody that the wicked shit is back. It's nothing but love. Everybody is strong and together. You know what I mean? And um, <laughs> it's all love. It's going to be a good goddamn time, man. Come on out. <laughs> you know what I mean? For real. I'm laughing because y'all don't hear what I'm hearing. I hear some it's like a ghost in my fucking house doing some shit. I got my shit. Uh, hey, that's, 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 that's something that we summoned up tonight on the show, I guess. I don't know. Yes, I did. I that's shit. It. They always told me if I listen to music, I'd be possessed by the devil. Maybe it possessed you. You better be careful, Eshop. No, um, I'm careful. You know, I make sure I put the Ouija board up and everything, you know. And Burning you sage. Know, or light some yeah, stage on fire. Yeah, we burn the sage every now and then. But, you know, I, I they don't like the weed when I burn the sage, so I just. You know, they drink all my wine. <laughs> but anyway, you guys. Hell of a show, you, man. Uh, thank you. Yeah, no, thank uh, you, man. I appreciate you uh, keeping the music alive here on the Eminem and Eminem show. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, yeah. We, we got to have you on again in, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, 2016 sometime. And uh, uh, maybe we can get you and Mastermind on a show together or something or uh, do a nice little round table with a few folks. No, any anytime, uh, man, anytime, man. Y'all always speak the truth and y'all always kick, kick, the, kick the jams, man. Whether it be the witness shit, man. the gangster shit, or just, you know, keeping it true to hip-hop, man. And uh, we, we appreciate you on this end, too, man. So one love, man. I appreciate y'all doing the show. Everybody that tuned in, we love y'all. Thanks. Keep kicking that wicked shit. And, yeah, murder master. That's what it is. And acidrap.com, get the new uh, EP, Remastered Collection. It's four classics. All the two collectors. All the two collectors. This shit is not going to be around long. I'm trying to tell y'all. And holla at me on that closed casket. On the low, it's coming. 